This is it, our one and only home. We are now in a race against time. For equality. A race for change. A race against climate change. Humans have existed for 200,000 years. Our planet has existed for four and a half billion. The world is changing rapidly, but it isn't going anywhere. It's not the planet we need to save. We need to save ourselves. planet in perfect balance, providing life across seven continents, from the biodiverse rainforests of South America to the deepest parts of the oceans. But this existence is at threat. Humans are pumping dangerous levels of carbon into the atmosphere, causing the planet's temperature to rise. In the last decade, we've been witness to the hottest temperatures ever recorded, and huge parts of our ice caps are melting into the ocean, disrupting the ecosystem, threatening our way of life. The consequences of climate change are affecting millions of people across the planet. Cities worldwide, everywhere, are going to become uninhabitable. Our planet is heading towards a climate disaster that threatens all life on Earth as we know it. We have to act now to make those changes. Extreme E will bring together the fastest drivers on four wheels in fully electric racing off-road SUVs to some of the most remote and damaged areas on Earth, raising awareness of the environment, electrification and equality. I have an impossible dream to race electric cars in the most remote corners of the planet, and all without leaving a trace. The x prix will be held across five countries, each highlighting the local impact of climate change. From the polluted oceans of Senegal, melting ice caps of Greenland, diminishing rainforests of the Amazon, to the expanding deserts of Saudi Arabia. Using the power of sport to highlight the effects that human impact is having on our world. I think it's really important to really immerse yourself in those areas and see what's happening with climate change so we can really increase awareness and from awareness we can have more people taking more actions. To tackle these demanding locations requires one of the most robust racing cars ever built, the Odyssey 21. This purpose-designed all-electric machine is constructed using cutting-edge environmental technologies and materials. The battery will be charged using a hydrogen fuel cell, producing clean emission-free energy. Behind the wheel of these off-road machines will be some of the biggest names in racing. The car feels insane. It's amazing how much torque you have to have immediate power when you touch the throttle pedal. The drivers, they didn't know what to expect and they were blown away. That's probably the biggest shock is just how much torque you're able to get. And marking a historic first for international motorsport, the driver lineup will be equally split. 50% male and 50% female. The level of competition is going to be insane. Teams will go wheel to wheel on the most extreme terrains, in the most extreme temperatures, driving the most extreme vehicle. Extreme E takes racing to uncharted territories by bringing the action to some of the most remote locations, all of which are suffering from the destruction of our environment. But there's more to this than flat out racing. A team of industry leading scientists have joined our race for a greener future to provide unrivaled insights into the regions where we compete guaranteeing we race without a trace. When the chequered flag falls, our legacy programs will ensure that Extreme E leaves a lasting difference in each and every location. We want to bring awareness, we want to showcase electric cars, and we want to leave behind a legacy linked to climate change and to pollution. Wouldn't it be great to be a part of something that really does make a difference? This is fierce and exciting racing with the future of our planet at its heart. This is the greatest adventure of our time. This is Extreme E. Electric Odyssey. Extreme E sees nine teams entering the inaugural season and they are filled with some of the best driving talent on the planet. 
American racing royalty Andretti have teamed up with Britain's United Autosport and have former World Rallycross champion Timmy Hansen driving alongside Katie Munnings. Yeah, I've been in my family team for many years and coming to a new team will be a challenge but it's gone very easy. Like uh, Katie is not my sister but almost, you know, uh, we get along well and uh, I feel already at home in Andretti United. Chip Ganassi Racing are known for fielding winners and they intend to keep it that way. With eyes on the prize, the All-American outfit have recruited Kyle LeDuc and Sarah Price. We want to go racing. That's why I think Chip hired both of us, is because he knows we're dedicated to this. We will do it with a purpose and, and leave the smallest footprint as we can, but our footprint will be on the top of that podium for sure. Apt Racing have the first manufacturer backing in the series with Cupra and have plenty of driving experience as Claudia Hertgen and Sweden's Matthias Ekström take the wheel. I always go racing to have a good time, but for sure the biggest aim is to go and win races and win championships. In this paddock, it will be full of enemies. It will be a, a furious battle. Acciona Sainz, created by rally legend Carlos Sainz, sees the two-time World Rally Champion and four-time Dakar Rally winner pairing up with Leia Sainz, an 11-time Dakar racer. We are going through the unknown and personal is going to be very challenging, but it's the same for everyone. Hispano Suiza, the Spanish brand with Swiss engineering heritage. Driving for the team is rally racer Christine Giampoli Zonka and British rallycross driver Oliver Bennett. I think we just want to have a lot of exciting times, don't we? I think we're, we're just going to bring the excitement and do the best we can. I think between us, we've got some great experience. The team is great. I think we've got everything we need. Veloci Racing have Formula E and Formula One experience behind the scenes, and Stefan Sarazan and Jamie Chadwick behind the wheel. The car feels awesome. Honestly, every time I get out of this car, I'm smiling. Uh, even if I'm miles off the pace or feeling quick, either way, I've got a big smile on my face. Lewis Hamilton is one of the most successful motorsport drivers of all time, with seven F1 titles to his name. Now he's launched his own team, X44, employing the most successful rally driver in history, Sebastian Loeb, along with Christina Gutierrez, only the second female driver ever to win a Dakar stage. From a driver's perspective, I'm always looking for someone that's pushing the limits. Experience is key, so there's no substitute for experience. Hot off the heels of Lewis Hamilton's X44, his former teammate and 2016 Formula One world champion, Nico Rosberg, enters with Rosberg Extreme Racing. He's recruited the talent of three-time World Rallycross champ, Johan Christofferson, and youngest and only female Australian rally champion, Molly Taylor. It's just obviously so different to anything that I've driven or you know anyone else here, we're all, we're all in the same boat, but we've made good progress, um, we feel comfortable in the car, so we're looking forward to just, just getting into the action and going for it. Last to enter this almighty roster, JBXE. Founded by Jensen Button, he becomes the third Formula One world champion to launch their own Extreme E team and the first to be taken to the wheel as well. He's chosen Swedish racing driver Michaela Arling Kotelinski as his teammate. I think we'll, we'll be putting on a fantastic show everywhere that we go and they've got the great base for it, and fantastic machinery and the best drivers in the world. Can't wait for the season to start. One of Extreme E's biggest challenges is moving the fleet of Odyssey 21s around the globe in the most carbon efficient way possible. A unique problem that required a unique solution in the form of the St. Helena. Originally built in 1989 to service the inhabitants' needs on the remote island of the same name, the St. Helena has undergone a huge transformation for its new life. So over the last two years, there's been an amazing amount of work gone on from the project team, purchasing the St. Helena, bringing her back and refitting her. An amazing amount of work and effort from everyone. She's had a complete refurbishment from top to bottom. That refurbishment includes 40 tonnes of steelwork. All the engines have been refurbished completely. All the fuel injection equipment has been replaced. All the component parts in the engine have been replaced. She now burns low sulphur fuel. The engines are as efficient as, as they ever could be. 
The fuel is basically uh, the champagne of fuels. You can't get better fuel for a ship. The vessel won't be going at full speed, she'll be going at eco speed, which means that we get as much speed out of her for the lowest carbon footprint as possible. Basically, St Helena is as new as the day that she uh, came out of the shipyard 30 years ago. St Helena has uh, got the passenger facilities, passenger cabins to be able to house uh, the many crew that will be working on board, not only with the Extreme E uh, programme but also with uh, running the ship. And also she's got the two holds forward, she's got the crane capabilities uh, to be able to lift up uh, containers up and into the holds so she's the best of both worlds. With the engineering works finished, it was time for the ship to complete sea trials in order to check that all systems were ready to go. Currently we're doing our sea trials out in the, uh, the Irish Sea, uh, not too far away from Liverpool. And the idea of sea trials is to test the machinery, certainly with the main engines and checking that everything's a ship shape, ready to go to sea to start our World Series, our World Cruise as we call it. Certainly during the sea trials, uh, we've uh, experienced some quite rough weather yesterday in particular, and she handles it great, so should be the perfect ship to take around the world. Finishing touches when we get back into Liverpool, the preparations will continue for number one hold and number two hold. But of course we've got the laboratory which has been brought in, so that's gonna be a really exciting area that I personally would be very interested in to see what they're doing uh, in there, analyzing the environment, analyzing various water samples, um, seeing where we're at. Extreme E is all about promoting climate change and we want to leave the land better than how we found it and hopefully uh, the laboratory and their answers will, will be a key part to that. This ship is paving the way to a new future for the environment. After two years of planning and thousands of hours of repair and refurbishment, the St Helena was ready and the day had finally come to load the fleet of Odyssey 21s for their maiden voyage around the globe. Big moment, big moment. A long, long time waiting for this, years of preparation, and uh, finally the first car is going on board the Santa Elena, our floating paddock, uh, to get ready for the first race. We will load in the next two days all the cars on board, all the containers, the fuel cell, generators, everything we need for the first race. And then this historic ship, which has a new life now, will sail to uh, Saudi Arabia for the first race. This is a huge occasion. We're going to be taking it off of this trailer. I'll be moving it with the forklift over to our lifting tray over here. Once it's secured, we're going to be lifted on board and into the cargo hold using the ship's own crane. Yes, very happy. That's the first car in and uh, just a few more to go and that'll be it. It'll be job done. We're immensely proud to have taken this beautiful old ship from the state she was in when we purchased her to what you find now, refurbished, repainted, is ready to embark on this round the world voyage with the Odyssey cars. It was easy to see from the cargo manifest that we could fit all the cars and containers required by Extreme E into the two hulls that we were given. As the series goes, we have confidence that the Centralina has the extra cargo carrying capacity to meet any demands from Extreme E. I was absolutely blown over when I was driving in and just saw the size of it. Um, photos just don't do it justice. I really cannot believe how much they can get on it as well after having a tour. It's all coming to life now and seeing the first car uh, lifted in today was quite nerve wracking because I was thinking, oh my God, those cars, <laughs> so valuable. But sailing around the world with this ship is going to be a really special moment. When uh, I had the crazy idea of buying this ship about two years and a half ago, we knew we wanted to do this car championship. We didn't have any cars and we wanted to take this boat to the most remote corners of the planet. And today, thanks to you and all your hard work, we made it a reality. Thank you all very much, guys. Big applause for you.
The St. Helena finally set sail on its journey to deliver everything needed for the first Extreme E race in the deserts of Saudi Arabia. For the millions who live on the edges of the world's deserts, the effects of global warming mean survival is becoming increasingly difficult. Although the effects of climate change on environments such as these may not be as well known, they are becoming increasingly clear. To help bring awareness to how global warming is affecting our deserts, Extreme E has enlisted the help of Oxford University's Professor of Climate Science, Richard Washington. We hear a lot about ice melt and sea level rise and changes to the rainforests. We hear very little about the deserts themselves, but it's really at our own cost. Deserts are extraordinarily beautiful, fragile, important ecosystems, but they're becoming hotter and they're becoming drier and they're becoming larger. For an environment where people rely heavily on scarce fertile soil that can sustain agriculture, the effects of droughts, mass farming and excessive use of pesticides mean soil erosion and the resulting desertification is having a devastating effect. At the edges of the desert systems of the world live hundreds of millions of people who eke out an existence in a delicate balance of the short, brief rain. If those systems are to change and become more desert-like, their productivity, their livelihoods are threatened. What happens in those deserts is that the plant life will die very quickly. The topsoil will be blown away by the winds. Hundreds of millions of tons of topsoil is blown away across the planet. We see, for instance, Saharan topsoil in the Caribbean, in the Amazon, in Florida. And that's an irreversible process because it takes thousands of years for topsoil to reform. As fertile soil becomes dust, hospitable land transforms into barren desert. Every year, millions of people are being forced to abandon their homes due to our deserts expanding, fleeing their traditional lands and joining others in ever-expanding urban areas. With just a few months to go until Extreme E visited the stunning yet unforgiving landscape of Alula, there was plenty of planning to take place as organizers headed to visit the site of the first round. And the first job was deciding exactly what course the teams and their Odyssey 21 cars would have to take on. We're in Al Ula, which is north of Saudi. I was invited by the Saudi uh, Motorsports Federation to join the Extreme E in uh, deciding a route for the track of the uh, Extreme E race. So what we did was just mark uh, potential uh, corner straights and there was a big emphasis on staying in line with the natural environment you know sort of responding to the route that's already within the land so it's just finding that balance between uh, respecting the the terrain but also trying to find a space that's safe enough for the racers to compete as well as mapping out the course for the drivers to do battle on the television broadcast team were on the ground to make sure the wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing action and stunning location would be seen by the world We've been here two days now. What we're doing is planning where all the cameras go. As you can see, the landscape's gorgeous, but it makes it a little difficult. So we've got a couple of days in the ground now working out what we're going to do. We've got a stunning landscape to work with. And the job now is to make sure that we, uh, we capture it. Well, the reason we've come up to this top point is to try and work out where we might put a camera which sees all the way down to the uh, first turn and pretty much the start line. It's a really amazing epic shot. You can see the cars would come flying down here into this open valley, do a hairpin and then come back up the second valley here before they move on to this um, big jump over here. So really it's a case of trying to show the landscape and also follow the racing in one shot. I'm here to try and work out how we're going to get all the signals from the cars, the drones, all the cameras to the TV compounds. And everything around you which makes it so beautiful makes it a nightmare for us really. So we're trying to sort of thread line of sight radio signals around valleys and around rocks to try and get all these signals back to the TV compound. I don't think I've had anything quite as ambitious as this. I've done quite a lot of big jobs but I don't think I've been anywhere quite so remote and quite so groundbreaking. I would say the most inspiring thing about the track is the, is the natural surroundings. You know, it is the fact that we are guests to this environment. 
the harmony that you can have, you know, between sports like this and also respecting the environment that you're doing it in, you know, that's the most rewarding thing about this place. It's stunning and surpasses anything that any human can create. When I put a helmet on, you know, I get this question all the time. How is it being a, a female in a male-dominated world or sport? I, I'm not a female, I'm not a male. I'm just a racer. One of the great things about motorsport is that when you put the helmet on, it doesn't matter what gender you are. And that's kind of, I guess, always been my philosophy growing up and competing in rallying. But what I have noticed through competing with a number of young girls that then see a female competing and then want to be involved. So I think having that exposure uh, at the highest level is really important to help improve the diversity and equality for, you know, for the next generations coming up. If this can help change the amount of girls that are involved at grassroots and then what the future of our sport looks like, I think it's, it's really important for that reason. What Extreme is doing right now is pretty incredible. This is gonna be able to provide girls that probably have incredible talent that has never been seen before, be able to showcase it. That itself is huge for women in motorsports, I think. Extreme E is paving the way in gender equality within motorsport. And to mark the recent International Women's Day, one of its teams, Veloci Racing, brought some female talent physically and virtually along to their base in London for a chat with Ailish Barrett, an electric vehicle fan and presenter of YouTube channel Electroheads. This International Women's Day, Veloce and Electroheads have teamed up to bring to you some of the top female talent globally across esports, motorsports, and content creation. As Veloce are known for their esports competitions, they invited their own Extreme driver and current W Series champion Jamie Chadwick along to test her skills against female sim racing star Emily Jones, aka M Ray. Dutch racer and gamer Maxime MXM, and Ria Bish, a sharpshooting gamer with an eye for the kill. Jamie was first up out of the four races to set a timed lap. As a female in motorsport, what challenges have you overcome and what stereotypes have you had to change? I want to prove that women can race you know, equally along men, alongside men and there's no reason for us to be slower. I think we're definitely capable of being you know, up with the men and as good as, as, good as the guys. Is Emily, I know you have you know, become the most successful female driver in sim racing. What is next for you? More sim racing this year. I, I love sim racing. Being a part of McLaren Shadow is, is awesome. And um, yeah, more racing, more results. That's the plan. You obviously have a huge following online, which of course attracts positive and negative attention. How do you deal with the trolls? First you think like, ah, oh, why are these people so mean? But then you're like, okay, I just focus on what I do and what I like and they can't stop me. What are some tips you, you could give to any girls who enjoy gaming and want to pursue it? Yeah, it's, it's honestly awesome. I think you just gotta go for it. If you're passionate about it, then you just gotta go for it. With a time of 1 minute 26.5 seconds, the winner, the ultimate female racer today is Maxime. Well done, Maxime. Thank you. <laughs> Tough gig for Jamie taking third spot, but we know she's fast behind the wheel of a real car, and we'll get to see her taking on the men and women of the Extreme E lineup soon. This is the last time we're going to see the United Kingdom for a while. What a send off! Um, wonderful clear blue skies, calm seas. The sun setting over the, uh, the Cornish headland over there and uh, an absolute privilege to be out here to see that. What a send off. As the St Helena waved goodbye to British waters, it headed south across the notoriously rough Bay of Biscay, past the west coast of France and Spain, before turning into the Mediterranean Sea. We are approaching the Straits of Gibraltar. We'll be off the coast of, north of the coast of Morocco in approximately one hour. Would say simple, but should be straightforward if everything goes to plan. Uh, so right in front of us, so slightly over to starboard, we've got what we call the rock, which is Gibraltar. Uh, and then you've got the harbour here. Once we cross this traffic lane, we'll um, then we'll come alongside. Go ahead, this is St Helena. 
Yeah, good evening, Captain. I'll board you somewhere in Gibraltar Bay. Okay, the vessel ahead of us is now underway and proceeding to the east. Thank you very much for the information. After making a brief pit stop in Gibraltar for fresh supplies, she would head across the Mediterranean for the Suez Canal and round one of Extreme E. It's the home straight, it's the last leg. heading to Saudi Arabia. First race ever to start extremely. We're ready.